problem solving and persistence key to crafts. It's really windy right now, so things might start blowing away. The top of the shell and the bottom of the shell. I have four legs. Oh no! Let me cut for a dramatic search to find the tail of my turtle. The snake isn't gonna put on a sweater. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm going to be working on a reptile pipe cleaner project with you today. So for this project you are going to need two orange pipe cleaners, two red pipe cleaners, three green pipe cleaners, one black pipe cleaner, one brown pipe cleaner, one yellow pipe cleaner, some glue, and scissors. You also are going to need some googly eyes because all of our reptiles are going to have eyes. Okay, so before we get into the actual craft, I want to talk to you a little bit about reptiles. So what exactly are reptiles? The word reptile comes from a Latin origin and means one who creeps, which is pretty fitting for reptiles. They live in all types of environments, from forests, like what you see around me here, to oceans, to deserts, etc. Um, and some probably even live in your neighborhood. There are a lot of types of reptiles that are common to New York, and we're going to talk about a few today. So some characteristics of reptiles that um, make them different than other animals are that reptiles are cold-blooded. That means that they cannot uh, maintain their own body temperature. So for example, if I was a reptile and I was cold or I wanted to be hot, I would go and I would sit in the sun and by sitting in the sun, my body would warm up. At the same time, if I wanted to be colder, if I was too hot, if I was in the sun for too long and you know I'm done being hot, I would go into the shade and I would hang out in the shade and then that would cool me down. So that's how reptiles manage their body heat. It's different than us. Humans are able to like hold on to body heat in a different way. We kind of maintain a regular temperature, even though sometimes we're cold and sometimes we're hot. We have a regular internal body temperature and that's different for cold blooded animals. Um, another characteristic of reptiles is that they lay eggs which is different than mammals because mammals, like humans, give birth to live babies. Like, our babies don't come out of eggs. Same with like deer and dogs and cats. Um, additionally, reptiles have a backbone, meaning that they are vertebrae, and they have scales, like a lizard, or they might have scoots, which is just a really fancy word for like the shell of a tortoise or the armor of a crocodile. Scoots are just very similar to scales in their makeup, but they have a different name. Reptiles also live on land and they use lungs to breathe. So they don't live in the water. They need their lungs, they need to be out of the water. Um, sometimes reptiles are confused with amphibians. Uh, some example of amphibians are like frogs and salamanders. And these are animals that live half of their life in the water and then another part of their life outside of the water. So reptiles are different because they're not spending time in the water in the same way. They might need to go get a drink, but they're not living in the water. Amphibians have a smooth, sticky skin, they're not scaly, and they lay eggs that are usually covered in gel, and they're often laid in the water. Um, they also generally will have webbed feet to help with swimming, and reptiles have none of this. Reptiles have hard eggs, they aren't swimming, they're just drinking water if they're going in the water, and they spend all of their time on land. So now that we've talked about what exactly a reptile is and what makes them different than amphibians, I want to show you a few different types of reptiles so that we can kind of wrap our brains around this reptile thing and then we're going to recreate our reptiles with some pipe cleaners. Okay, so our first reptile is my Russian tortoise, Ty. Ty is about 25 years old and he was 10 when I adopted him 15 years ago. Domestic Russian tortoises, domestic meaning that the tortoises are pets, will usually live to be about 100 years old, so I'm going to have Thai for a very long time. Russian tortoises only grow to be about 6 to 8 inches in length, so Thai is actually full grown, and you can see compared to my hand that he's not too big. Thai eats mostly vegetation, like leafy greens and lettuce, and for a treat he does love sweet fruits and veggies like strawberries, tomatoes, and even cucumbers. Tortoises don't have teeth, um, but he does have a very pointy mouth, and it works kind of like a bird's beak. Ty's never bitten me on purpose before because we're pretty good friends, but he did mistake me for food once, and that does hurt a little bit. Ty is a male Russian tortoise, and males are generally territorial, meaning that he does like to protect his space. We have two Russian tortoises in the house, and they have their own separate homes for this reason. Ty has an indoor tank, 
where he lives most of the time. And he also has this outdoor space that he hangs out in during the hot days in the summer. In general, Ty likes the temperature to be between 75 and 95 degrees because as a reptile, he's cold blooded and needs the environment to be warm for his body to be warm. Russian tortoises do hibernate in the wild when it gets cold, but because Ty has an indoor home with heated lights, he does not experience climate change and therefore does not need to hibernate. As a reptile, Ty also does not live in water and he actually can't swim at all. He lives completely on land. Our next reptile is my bearded dragon, Stumpy. Bearded dragons are native to Australia, but can be found in all types of environments. They became common pets in the United States in the 1990s, and their name comes from the beard on their necks. The first thing you will notice about Stumpy is that he does not have a tail. We actually adopted Stumpy that way when he was a baby, so we don't know what happened to his tail. Some lizards can grow back their tails, but bearded dragons are not a type of lizard that are able to do this. For bearded dragons, tails are generally used for balance, to socialize with other bearded dragons, and to indicate whether they're happy or upset, or to sway away predators. Stumpy has lived most of his life without his tail, so even without it, he still knows how to tell us when he's upset. He can still communicate those emotions. When Stumpy doesn't want us to hang out with him, he might hiss, he puffs up his beard. Sometimes his beard will actually turn black, which you can see here. He is also able to turn his whole body black if he's really feeling like he's in danger, but that doesn't happen very often. Uh, Stumpy might also take on a taller stance or bob his head. Um, Stumpy is an omnivore and he eats a diet of live crickets, dry crickets with extra vitamin dust on them, and vegetables like lettuce and tomatoes. Bearded dragons live between 10 and 15 years when they're domestic, when they're in homes, and Stumpy is about 4 years old. The average size of bearded dragons is 17 inches, um, but the larger dragons can grow to 2 feet long. Stumpy is much smaller because their tails are a lot of this length, so he's a bit of a smaller dragon. Similar to Ty, he prefers warm temperatures because he's cold-blooded and he has a heat light on the inside of his tank year-round. Okay, so the last reptile that I want to talk to you about before we move on to our craft is garter snakes. And garter snakes are really common to New York State. They're really common to all of North America and they live in all different climates in North America. You will see them a lot of the time when you're out hiking, and um, I see them sometimes at parks too, so if you keep an eye out, you might see them. So garter snakes are the most common snakes in all of North America. They're often pets, and they're pretty harmless. Garter snakes come in all types of colors, and, but they're often dark brown or black with yellow or green spots or stripes. Garter snakes are usually between 23 and 30 inches, so they're about two feet, maybe a little bigger, and they usually live in the woods or in a meadow. Garter snakes who live in cooler climates do hibernate in the winter. So if a winter is gonna happen, if the temperature is dropping, remember garter snakes are reptiles and reptiles are cold-blooded. A lot of these animals hibernate because once it starts getting cold, their body gets cold. And it's not like humans where we can like put on a sweater, the snake isn't gonna put on a sweater. The snake is gonna let his body cool and go to sleep and hibernate for a period of time. And then once it gets warm again, once spring comes, the garter snake comes out of hibernation. Garter snakes are active during the day, so they're not nocturnal. And that's why you'll see them at parks or when you're hiking. As with any wildlife, the most important thing to do if you see a garter snake is just let it be. So what we are going to do now is begin our craft. We're going to start with a chameleon, which is not quite the same as a bearded dragon at all. It's a different type of lizard, but they're still a reptile. We're gonna make three different reptiles today. And at the end, I'm gonna show you how to make a person too, so that you have someone to take care of these reptiles. Let's get started with our chameleon. First, we're going to make the head of our chameleon with one green pipe cleaner. Now, what I'm gonna do is take my pipe cleaner and put it in half. So I'm gonna put it about here and I'm gonna make a loop on the end and twist it so it has a circle. It should look something like this. And this is going to be your chameleon's head. It takes a little bit of imagination right now, but this is the head. So once you have this like L shape with a loop in the corner, all I did was twist it once. Um, I am going to 
take this part, this is gonna stay as our body, but this is gonna fill in our head. So all I'm gonna do is wrap this part around the head a few times to fill in this circle so that it's not like this big open green space. See, so now I have kind of filled that in and we have a body that remains. Next, I'm going to take my other green pipe cleaner and I'm actually going to cut it in half. So this is where our scissors come in handy. So I folded this into two pieces. So it's folded in half here. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it in the middle. So now I have two half size pipe cleaners. I'm gonna put one to the side and I'm gonna do that again with another one. So I've folded this in half. My two fourths are here and I'm going to cut it down the middle again. This should leave you with three pipe cleaners. One is half sized, two are half of that. They're fourths of the original one. So these are your legs. You're gonna put them to the side for a second. This is your chameleon's body. So in order to give the chameleon a round body so it has a little bit of dimension, we're going to take the pipe cleaner and just wrap it around your finger. Let me show you in just a second what that'll look like. Okay, so I have it wrapped curly around my finger. This is giving us a body that looks like this. It's kind of like a spring if I pulled it apart, but I want to keep it pushed together and I want it to be round, wound up a little bit. So after I create that wound up body, it'll slide right onto the chameleon like this. So now we have a head and we have a body attached to it as well. So next we're gonna take these two little ones and these are gonna be our legs. And all we're gonna do is fold it in half like this and then fold the other one in half as well. So I'm gonna fold that in half like this. And I wanna give it little feet. So all I'm gonna do is curve the ends here and then what I have are two little legs and I'm gonna do the same with the other one. I'm gonna curve the bottoms. Now I have two pairs of legs. I'm gonna take the two pairs of legs and I'm just gonna slide them onto my chameleon. Now what's kind of cool about this is that since we have this curly shape that we've created, all I'm doing is on the actual body, I'm taking my leg and I'm just sliding it in between the curls and then locking it in there. So I'm not gluing it or anything, I'm just sliding it straight in. So I'm gonna put this one in as well. There we go. The last part of our chameleon is that we have this tail and we wanna curl it. Chameleons have really curly tails. So we are going to take the end here and just twist it so that we create this little curl. I'm thinking of like a cinnamon bun or I don't know, maybe even a monkey's tail, like something that is pretty curly. And I've curled the tail up. I can give it a little bit more shape to let you see it a little more. There, so now I have this like really curly tail and a chameleon. Now I'm going to take my red pipe cleaner and I'm just gonna cut a small tongue. I'm not even gonna take a half or a fourth. I'm just gonna take the end and maybe I'll do the size of my thumb. So let's measure it up against my thumb. I'm gonna cut about that much for the chameleon's tongue. So I cut the little piece and all I'm gonna do is take it and slip it into the chameleon like this. Now the head isn't round, right? So the tongue is gonna stick out. Okay, so what I have now is the tongue sticking out here and um, if I had more pipe cleaners, I would probably cover up this side, but this is what I got. I don't have any other pipe cleaners with me right now, but if you wanted, you could add to the head a little bit and wrap it around one more time so that the red over here gets covered. I'm just gonna say that this is the open mouth. So here we have the chameleon with its tongue out. And when I think of tongues, I don't think of them as like straight. I think of them as a little curled. So I'm gonna give the chameleon a little bit of a curly tongue because maybe he's licking something or something. And then 
what we have here is a little chameleon that we've made out of pipe cleaners. So your chameleon should look something like this. So once we finish all of our animals, we are going to put googly eyes on our chameleon, but for right now, since we still have two more animals to go, I'm just going to put our chameleon to the side, and I'm going to get ready for the next animal. Okay, so for our next animal, you are going to need one green pipe cleaner and one brown pipe cleaner, and you're absolutely definitely going to need scissors because this one involves a little bit more cutting. So we're going to start with our brown pipe cleaner, and all you're going to do is fold it in half again so that you have two pieces and you are going to cut that in half and now i have two brown pieces of pipe cleaner and then i'm just going to put them to the side for now so i put my two brown pieces of pipe cleaner to the side and i am going to take my green pipe cleaner and this one i'm actually going to cut into a bunch of pieces because with this green pipe cleaner i want to make two legs a tail and a head so that is six pieces and they're all going to be just about the same size. So all I'm going to do is fold this in half and I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to fold this not in half this time. I want three pieces. So I'm going to fold this three ways. And if it's not perfect, we're not aiming for perfection here. It doesn't need to all be the same. Mine is almost perfect. It has just a little bit cut off, but that's fine. It's close enough for what we need. So I am going to cut this here. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to fold it into three parts and try to make them roughly about the same. But it's okay if they're not. Again, I have just one that is a little shorter than the others. And that's fine. It's not going to change the way the turtle looks. So we are going to... Do that. Did I mention yet that we're making a turtle? We're making a turtle right now. So now we have six pieces to make our turtle. And your pieces of pipe cleaner should look like this once you have cut them all to the right sizes. Okay, so for this turtle, we are going to need to make the shell. We're gonna to need to make four legs, a tail, and a head. Um, I'm going to start with the shell because I think that that's a good base. All we're going to do is, if you remember from the chameleon, we made like a curly tail at the end. You're going to make pretty much the same shape. So I'm just going to curl it up because I want it to be like a disc, right? I want it to be like a round shell for our turtle to live in. So I'm curling it up. I'm curling, curling and then it'll look like this in the end. All I did was I wrapped it a bunch of times so that it was a perfect curly shape. And I'll show you here. If I undo it a little bit, it looks like this. But I'm gonna wrap it up. So I make one, just like wrapped around circle. And then here is our turtle shell, which is pretty cool. I'm popping it out a little bit in the middle so that the shell is um, like indented here, like I pressed in here, and at the top it's up a little bit because I want my turtle shell to be rounded. If you want you to, your turtle to have just like a flat shell, that's fine too, but I want my turtle shell to be a little rounded, so I popped it up like that. So I'm just gonna put that to the side, and I'm gonna take my other brown pipe cleaner and do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna twist it up like this and wrap it around. Here, I'm gonna show you from another angle. Okay, so with my brown pipe cleaner here, it's the other half, all I am doing is I'm taking this piece and I'm twisting it in and then I'm making it a circle and I'm just wrapping it around and around and around in this circular motion so it's making a curl, which you can see in the metal a little bit. So I'm wrapping it around and around and once I'm done wrapping and I have it totally as a curl, just like the chameleon's tail, I'm popping it out a little bit so that the shell is a little rounded so it's not just totally flat. And then if you look, 
I have two pieces of a shell. If I connected them, I would have a whole shell right here. But we don't want to just have a turtle shell, right? We want a turtle. So it's time to move on to the green pieces. Okay. Okay, so next we have all of these green pieces of pipe cleaner that we're gonna turn into legs and a tail and a head for our turtle. So first, I want to start with our head because I think that that one might be just like a little tricky. So first, I wanna start with our head. The first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take one pipe cleaner and I just wanna make a little curl at the end. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna just wrap it a little bit. It's the same idea as um, your shell. And I just made like a little, little curl. I even put a little hole in the middle, but that's okay. I don't really, I don't need the hole. I made a little curl. And once I have a little curl, I'm going to bend it a little bit here to make the neck. And I have a little shape like this. And this is our turtle's head. So you see it has the circular head here and here's the turtle's neck. I'm just gonna put this one down and put it to the side. That's our turtle's head. Next, we're gonna do all of the leg. All of the legs are gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna do four legs. Turtles and tortoises have four legs generally. All I'm gonna do for the turtle's leg next is I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm gonna twist the end where there's not a loop. And that's just gonna kind of close it. When you twist a pipe cleaner like that, it kind of just turns it into one solid form. Um, so I've twisted the end of my pipe cleaner, like this type of end up here, and I have the loop at the end here. So that's done. I'm going to do that four times. So I did it once. Here I'm doing it again. I take it, I fold it in half, I twist the end, and then I squished it together a little bit to make it a more solid leg. That's two legs. I'm going to take it in half, twist the end. That's three legs. And then the last one I fold in half. I twist the end and that's four legs. Okay, now we're gonna do the turtle's tail. We're gonna do that pretty much the same as leg. We're just gonna fold it in half, taking our last piece, so you should have four legs now and a head, and then just one remaining. Our one remaining, I'm gonna fold in half. And this one, just so it looks a little different, I'm just gonna twist it all the way in half. So it's a little thinner than the legs and it just has a slightly different shape. Um, it looks a little smaller too, and that's okay. So if you look at it here, I've just twisted it a whole bunch of times, and now I have a little piece of pipe cleaner. It's just a little bit smaller than the legs are because of the way I twisted it. Um, because pipe cleaners have wires in them that are letting you do all that twisting, when you twist it a whole bunch of times, it looks like it gets smaller. It was the same size as the legs. Okay, so now if you were to look at it from the way that I can see it right now with all the pieces, you will see this. I have four legs, I have the turtle's head, and I have the tail. And then I have the two pieces of the shell here. So that's what I've got so far. Now what we're going to do is with your glue, we're going to glue all these pieces on and then close the shell. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So with our turtles, we made like a little neck here, right? There's a little ledge. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that little neck and I'm gonna put it inside the shell like this so it sticks out. So I'm going to take my glue. I have liquid glue, but if you have glue stick, it'll do the same job. Um, it's just as good. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue because I don't wanna use too much and I don't want it to take too long to dry. Oh no, is my glue not working? The hardest thing about Elmer's glue is that sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so let me try this again. I'm gonna just shoot it from here. So I squeeze the glue. Ah, it's coming out now. And I get a little bit of glue right here. And I'm not gonna use more than just this little bit because I'm gonna give it some time to dry and I'm gonna let it do that and I don't wanna rush the process. I also don't want there to be too much glue. So all I did was I pressed the head onto the body here and it's gonna stick, 
because it's glue, but if I touch it too much, it's going to move around, it's gonna fall off and it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna glue it there and I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so I have the head sitting there on the shell and it's glued, so I'm not gonna touch it because I don't want to touch it too much and then have it get messed up. The wind is trying to take it away from me again, so I'm gonna try to do this quickly so that the wind doesn't get me. Okay, so I have four legs here and I'm gonna glue the four legs onto the shell of the turtle. And at the end of this, what we're gonna do is glue the other shell on so it closes. I'm putting just a little bit of glue here, not too much. You can see I'm very careful with glue. That's because I know it gets so messy if we don't think about it. So I put a little bit of glue here and I'm just gonna glue it like this onto the turtle shell. So you can see here, it has its head and one little leg sticking out. Next, I'm going to take another leg. All of my legs are flying away in the wind, but I'll collect them in a second. Um, and take this last, this second leg, and I'm putting glue on it, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna stick it onto the turtle like this. And if I wanna check my work and make sure it looks good, I can just flip my turtle over for a second. You can see it has a head and two legs. So I'm gonna take another leg and do the exact same thing. Just repeat this process. And when you're doing this, any type of glue would work. I don't usually use hot glue guns because I think that they're easy to burn yourself, but you could do this with stick glue. You could do this with liquid glue, really anything to make it stick. I don't know if tape would work very well, but you could probably try um, if you really didn't have any glue. Okay, here's my last leg. So I'm gonna put some glue on this leg. And stick it on. And that is looking great. So if I flip him over, and I'm very, very gentle with him, you can see he has his four legs and a head in the front. Now, a turtle also has a tail. So I'm going to glue this tail on using the exact same process, just a little bit of glue. I want to make sure it sticks, but I also don't want to make too much of a mess and I don't want it to take too long to dry. And I'm gonna stick the tail on right there. So we have this turtle here and if we only had this many pipe cleaners, we could be done, right? We have a turtle now. But since we have another pipe cleaner, we are gonna glue it to the bottom here to complete the turtle's shell. So. I'm going to just take my glue and put it on in the middle here. I am using a little bit more glue now. Okay, so I take my glue and I put it on here. And then I also, to make sure it definitely sticks, want to put glue around the outside of my turtle shell. And I'm trying not to do too much still. I dropped it, okay, that's fine. Mess is a pretty common thing in crafts. Something that I have learned over the years is that everything can be cleaned up. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be cleaned up. Okay, so I finished my glue here and I am just going to stick it on to my turtle. Now he's gonna need some time to dry now. Um, but while I have him here, I'm gonna actually bend his legs just a little because I want him to be able to stand. So if I have him here, he has his head sticking up, he has his tail and he has his four legs. You can see him right here. And he's gonna get eyes in a minute but I want to give him some time to dry. So while he dries, I'm just going to put him to the side with his chameleon friend, who's having a hard time with the wind, and they're going to hang out for a little while. Okay, so we're going to start with our red pipe cleaner, and what we're going to do is we're going to come down on the end, and I have my black and yellow here ready to go. And I'm going to take my black and yellow, and I'm going to 
begin wrapping them around the red one. So you'll see I made one little wrap around. There's a little bit of red sticking out, but that's okay. So I wrapped it around one time, so they're kind of connected. And all I'm gonna do is wrap this black and yellow around the red. So the red is kind of the body of the snake, and then the black and yellow are just covering up the red so that we don't see too much of it because the colors we really want to see are the black and yellow. These, those are the colors that the gardener snake usually is. So I'm just wrapping it around. It's like a swirly pattern. I'm thinking of like a candy cane or something. And I'm just wrapping it and wrapping it and wrapping it. And you know, if a little bit of red is showing through, it's okay. You can see there's just a little bit of red, but I'm also trying to go pretty slow and be pretty careful that I wrap this all the way. So, as I'm wrapping, I'm like twisting with one hand and I'm wrapping with the other. You can do it in whatever way makes the most sense for you, but that's just what I'm finding easiest. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going. And you'll notice that these two are starting to be shorter than the red. That is okay. In the end, the red is going to be our tongue. So it is absolutely fine that they're getting short. We actually want that. We want the red to be sticking out more at the end so that we have a tongue. That's why the red is there. So we are twisting it. I think pipe cleaners are really cool because you can pretty much do anything with um, these simple pipe cleaner kind of ideas. I mean, we learned how to make a head today. Glue definitely makes pipe cleaners easier to work with, but you don't need it all the time um, because you can just twist this metal part and the pipes or the metal wires on the inside make it so easy to like form shapes. And I don't know guys, I just love a good pipe cleaner project. I think that the opportunities with them are endless. I've seen people make pipe cleaner action figures. I've seen like a Spider-Man pipe cleaner figure. I've seen, there's so many opportunities. I've seen people make like whole doll houses. I've seen dragons. And the cool thing is you can look up online all these different like pipe cleaner shapes and you can learn new ones too. So what's happened is at the end, I have a little bit extra black and that's fine. I'm just gonna finish wrapping the black. The yellow is already over. Um, and I just have a little bit more black. So at the end of the yellow, I just kind of pressed it really tight so that the metal part wasn't sticking out anymore. I don't want that wire um, to be sticking out because pipe cleaners can hurt you, right? They have a wire inside. So I wanna make sure it's pressed down as neatly as I can, both so it looks nice and also so it's safe. Okay, so what we have now is this swirly snake with a giant red tongue. Now this is great, but it doesn't really look like a snake yet, right? It kinda of just looks like some pipe cleaners together. So what I'm gonna do is I want my snake to be laying down. So I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna kind of form it into that. I'm doing like a curly circle and I have it go up a little bit, so it's like a spiral. And then he can sit. I'm gonna bend his head. He's, I want him looking down. And then his tongue can just kinda go up like this. His tongue can be doing anything. Maybe he's eating. Snakes smell with their tongues, so maybe he's smelling something. And this is a little more our style. So here we go. I'm gonna have him sit for Okay, so this is our snake right now. Oh no, the wind is really getting all of these animals. This is our snake. And the only thing he really still needs is some eyes, right? All of our animals need eyes. I have the other two over here hanging out. Turtle is still drying, but they need some eyes. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to 
get them some eyes. Okay, so while everything is drying, I thought it would be fun to make a person to go with all of these animals too. And um, the cool thing about these people is that if you have extra pipe cleaners, you can, or just pipe cleaners around the house, or if you have pipe cleaners later on. Okay, so while the turtle is drying and while I'm getting my googly eyes ready, I am going to um, make a person to go with all of these animals so that we have someone that can hang out with the reptiles. So I'm using two orange pipe cleaners for this. You could really use any two colors, um, but I'm just gonna use orange to demonstrate and then we'll see what to do from there. So I am going to start by taking one orange pipe cleaner and I'm just gonna bend it in half. And just like the chameleon, I want to make a loop on the end. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm just going to put a twist in the end. And this is my person's head. So there's my twist. I did just one and now we have two legs sticking out and we have a head. But people also have arms. So we are going to bend in two arms here. I'm just putting a bend in one piece and then I'm going to bend an arm in here. So now that we've created two arms, I'm going to recreate the legs. There we go. We have two arms and two legs. After we've folded these arms like this, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the legs. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna just fold it in half like this. And I'm gonna fold it in half here as well, like this. And then I have two arms, two legs, and a head. To make these all a little bit stronger, I'm just gonna twist them. So I'm gonna start by twisting one arm and I'm just gonna twist it. And this is gonna turn it into more like one piece of pipe cleaner instead of two separate ones, right? So I'm just making it a little bit more solid. It's just like the turtle's tail. I'm twisting it and I'm gonna do the exact same with the legs. I have the arms twisted. I'm just gonna twist the legs so that the wires are all coiled and everything is a little bit more, honestly, it makes it a little softer too. Okay. So I have my two arms and my two legs, and I'm also gonna twist the legs together a little, just maybe once or twice to make the body a little bit more firm. And what I have is a little person. We could stop here, but I want my person to be a little bit more defined. So I'm just gonna take this pipe cleaner and I'm going to wrap it around the neck of our person and then around the head and kind of work my way up. So now I've filled in my pipe cleaner's head. I'm gonna bring it back down and go around an arm. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing and bring it over and go around another arm. And all I'm doing is making this just like a little thicker, right? Um, just so that our pipe cleaner person is a little bit more sturdy. I'm gonna wrap it around maybe the pipe cleaner guy's waist, wrap it around a leg and around the other leg too. And it's okay if you run out. I didn't finish wrapping the legs, but it doesn't matter. It still looks pretty good, right? So now I have this little pipe cleaner person and you can use this to start like any action figure that you wanna make or a character. If I want, I could take an extra color and I could add some hair or maybe I could put a backpack on them to make them a little camper. Um, really the opportunities from here are endless. This is just a good start for a person. So now I have a person and I have three reptiles for him to hang out with. And here is our finished products so far. We just need to add the googly eyes. And I didn't get googly eyes for my person, so we're gonna have to use some imagination for him or for her but we are going to put googly eyes on the other animals. So, in just a second for you, but a few hours for me, once I let this turtle dry, I am going to put some googly eyes on to get ready. Thank you all for joining me on this reptile adventure today. 
Um, I hope you all go forward and make your own reptile pipe cleaner animals, but I also hope you make other animals too and other people and action figures because now I want to challenge you to think about the reptiles that you've seen and think about where you've seen them and the next time you're out at a park or in your backyard or someone else's backyard or walking down the street even, keep an eye out for reptiles and see. Sometimes if you look really closely, you might come across some. Okay, thank you all for hanging out with me today and for making some reptiles. Until next time.